the St. Philip Lutheran Church for this morning worship. It's so good to be with you all in the virtual world today. A couple announcements before we begin. For all of you who took the little piggy bank home that we were going to fill up with coins for during Lent, we are still taking those piggy banks in and you can bring in and drop your coins off at the church at any time. If you'd like to support St. Philip in our ministry, you can give online or you can drop your offering off at the church or in the mailbox. Uh, to give online, you can just look at our website. And I know, I know what everybody is thinking right now. Wow, Pastor Brandon, your hair is just sticking up right there. Yes, Alyssa, it looks like I have almost a mohawk. This is, this is part of the pandemic life. Well, other than that, let us enter into this time of worship. Please join with me in singing, We All Are One in Mission. begin as is our custom with our statement of faith the bible verse from ephesians that is grounded and at the basis of our christian beliefs together we say for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of god and we'll move into our statement of inclusion really loud for everyone born, a, a place, place at the, the table. table. For young and for old, a, a place, place at, at the table. table. For gay and for straight, a, a place at the table. table. For rich and for poor, a, a place at the table. table. Everyone together, building, building a bigger table. table. And we will now enter into our time of confession. Incarnate God. For the times we've hurt you, forgive us. For the times we've hurt others, forgive us. For the times we've hurt ourselves, forgive us. For we are made in your image, and it is very good. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Romans. Paul writes, Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. 
but God proved God's love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of God's Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But even more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our gospel today comes from John chapter 17. Jesus prays for his disciples. After Jesus has spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made known your name to all those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. They know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please pray with me. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference, one day at a time. Amen. Amen. A couple of years ago, I was on a team that was responsible for putting together a youth event in Houston for 800 teenagers. The purpose of this event was to bring together young people of different ethnicities and backgrounds to learn about each other and to learn about leadership. We had young people of Latinx descent, Asian descent, European descent, African descent, Arabic descent, the speakers at this event were from different backgrounds, and in worship we had music that was in different languages. It was so beautiful, everything that we learned about each other. On the last night, we had this celebration event, and we had a DJ come in and play music from different backgrounds, all different kinds of music, and it was so wonderful to see these young people dancing together on this dance floor, growing together and learning together, it was a beautiful thing. I say this story today because we are living in a time when it is more important than ever to come together as one. Everyone has gifts and everyone has a voice and we need those at the table. That night, I believe we got a glimpse of what Martin Luther King Jr. calls the beloved community. And these young people showed us what it was like to come together as one. 
In the Bible story today, right before Jesus is arrested in the garden, Jesus is praying for his disciples. He knows that his, he is about to be crucified and that his followers will be on, uh, on earth after he ascends to heaven. He is asking God to make him glorified so that they may be one, so that his followers can see that he and his father are one. Because of this, his followers will come together as one, just like Jesus and God are, and I know that's really confusing, but this is powerful stuff. Life on earth is not going to be easy for his followers. Jesus knows it's going to be tough, Things are going to fall apart all the time. But Jesus prays this prayer. Jesus glorified his God on earth with all the good work that he did. He wants to be glorified in heaven, and his followers need to know that they can be a part of all of it. That they are a part of all of it, and there is more to come. At the end of this prayer, Jesus tells God to protect his followers so that they can come together like one, like Jesus and the Father are one. And that, my friends, is a wonderful way to be. And now we on earth, we get the chance to follow Jesus and be one. However, in the midst of the pandemic, and for many years before now, it feels like we have been more divided than ever, more divided than we have been in most of our lifetimes, and mine at least. With social media and the internet, rumors spread quickly, and it feels like we are constantly trying to push ourselves away from each other even more. That people say mean things to each other, and respect seems to be a thing of the past. It's like God has this wonderful dance floor, but we choose to turn away from seeing our neighbor. If we could just come together as one, maybe we can see what a world looks like that is in love with the gospel and is transformed by the work of Jesus Christ. There is a challenge, however, in the midst of everything going on here, because coming together as one means that we must recognize that this pandemic is harder for certain groups of people than it is for others. We know that the community hit hardest by the coronavirus is the African American community. We know that people with asthma and other respiratory issues are more susceptible to the virus. People of African descent in Detroit are more likely to have asthma than other ethnicities. And further, we know all about the heavy industry that is in Detroit and right next to Detroit that has been causing air pollutions for years that has affected people in the areas right around it. And I know you all are familiar with the orange skies, and I know you are familiar with driving 75 and smelling that smell on the freeway. Our history of people with African descent dealing with air pollution and asthma and has set up the community to struggle even more with the coronavirus. And there are ELCA churches in Detroit that will not be able to have in-person services for a long time much later than suburban churches. And also in Southwest Detroit and other communities, there are people who are in the communities who are undocumented. And what I have learned is that many people who are undocumented are scared to go to the doctor and get help for the fear that they may be deported or they may get their family in trouble. And that is unacceptable. No matter what our political beliefs are, Jesus' mandate to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves rings louder than any political beef or drama that we must put any political division aside to help the neighbor in need. 
You see, we are at a Kairos moment in our human experience. The world is changing around us in ways that we have never seen before. This time is going to call for us to think about the sacrifices in ways and for us to open our eyes, our heart, and our mind in such a manner that we might have never thought about before. But when I think about what Jesus has done for us with the cross and the freedom that we have been given, that God has given us a dance floor and God has given us a freedom to dance, I think about that dance floor in Houston where all those young people were together and in the midst of those storms, those dance people, those young people were moving and pushing our way into a better tomorrow where we have the chance to do better than we did yesterday. I am filled with excitement. I am filled with hope. I am filled with passion. So church, we get the chance to live out this gospel experience that Jesus brought us all the way back in 33 AD. Three nails, a crown of thorns, and a spear to the side could not stop Jesus then, and the coronavirus cannot stop us today. Coronavirus, you may think you are bringing death upon us. You may think that you are pulling us apart. Coronavirus, you may think that you are pulling us apart. You may think that you are bringing us a crucifixion, but we have a resurrection. We have a resurrected Jesus that brings us together. And not only are we going to survive, but we are going to thrive together and do things that have never been done. We are standing before the garden, friends. And we know from the Bible story that with the garden comes a crucifixion. There comes a death. But what the world doesn't know is that Jesus has already set up the other side for us with a resurrection with a resurrection so strong that the devil himself doesn't even know what to do with it. Jesus has, turned love, the, Jesus has turned the death into a dance floor where we all dance together to a song of justice, peace, and love. And so I close today with a part of a speech that Martin Luther King Jr. gave right before he died in 1968. A speech he gave to his people who were going through their own Kairos moment. At the end of the speech, MLK said that he had seen the mountaintop. And what MLK said that as we as a people will get to the promised land. And I am so happy tonight, King says, I am not worried about anything. I am not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. So in our Kairos moment today, might we make that a reality for all people? And all the faith-led people said, Amen. Amen.
us join together in the Apostles' Creed, a statement of what we believe as Christians. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Living God, you chose us to be your witnesses to the world. We pray for the church in every place and the congregations in our community. Focus our hearts and minds in the ministry we share in your name. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Loving God, all creation sings praises to you. You delight in the oceans and the mountains are your throne. Teach us humility and respect for our home. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Sovereign God, you rule the heavens, the earth, and time itself. Make this a time of justice, peace, and solidarity among all nations and all peoples, so that oppression and violence rule no more. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, you guide us as we seek wisdom. We pray for teachers, professors, theologians, daycare workers, and all those charged with teaching the young and the old. Give them endurance and persistence in their valuable work. Lord, in your mercy. Your mercy is great. Infinite God, your inheritance given to all your saints is your presence in our life and in our death. We remember with thanksgiving the faithful departed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please receive the benediction. May God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can actually make a difference in this world, so that we are able to do with God's grace what others claim cannot be done. Who are we? The church. What do we do? Change the world. How do we do it? With the love of God. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.